Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Mortgage Coach Tuesday interview. And I am super fired up about this. This is kind of going back to old school mortgage coach interviews. When I first started doing these Tuesday interviews, I don't know, over 12 years ago, uh, for the first year or two, that's all I did was just long form loan officer interviews where I spent the first half getting to know them, uh, understanding the mortgage practice. And it's been a while since we've done this. So I, I interviewed Shivani. God, Shivani, what was it about a month, maybe two months ago? I think so, yeah. Yeah, it was a 20 minute interview and I'm just like, oh my God, we need a whole hour with this amazing later. So I'm excited to bring you on stage here in the mortgage coach community. I'm really, really excited. I've been waiting a long time for this opportunity. Good, well, the, the day is here. So uh, to help facilitate this conversation, we've got Todd Bookspan, the, the founder of Win By Noon. What's up, Todd? Hey, not much. Good morning. I'm uh, super excited to uh, unpack Shivani's business when uh, I'll tease it a little bit. Am I allowed to say that Shivani is going to be taking three months off maternity leave soon? And so you've got to have just a killer business and a killer team in place in order to do that. So we're going to ask questions and learn about how you've got yourself set up for that plus so much more. Yeah, no, you're a really good point, Todd. There may be a question, guys. She's a, a mother or two and she's got another one due in January. So um, any questions about her mortgage practice, how she balances business and life. Uh, and then we've got Deborah Bird. Uh, Deborah, you can ask any questions and focus on anything, but you, you might want to pull out the, the marketing and social media genius in Shivani. I mean, if anyone's not following her, especially on Instagram, you need to go ahead and do that right now because she is killing it. And I just love that she's a mom. She's got two little ones. She's got a kid due and there's no excuses. She's still taking action and she's being authentic. So Go check her out. Follow her on Instagram. She's a good one to uh, take notes from. Right on. So guys, remember mastermind style. Any questions you have? Uh, I'm ADD, so I'm going to be looking in different channels, whether I should or not. But put your comments down below so I have something to find. Uh, so, so Shivani, let's just start with telling us about your mortgage practice today. Like what kind of volume are you doing? Uh, describe your team and your, your mortgage practice. Yeah, definitely. So we just passed a uh, hundred million for the year um, at the end of October. We're going for top producer again within All Western Mortgage, the company I work for, um, which is a huge goal because we won it last year and I was the first woman to win it in our company. And as we all know, 2020 had the stars aligned for those of us in the mortgage business. Um so to win it again in 2021, where I think the market has been a lot harder in terms of purchases and fluctuating rates will mean a lot to our team. So that's our goal at the moment. Um, we, I am team, the team lead. Behind me, I have uh, the first person I ever brought on was at seven years into the business. I finally got an assistant and to do admin paperwork, Claire. And then about a year after that, I brought on my first licensed loan partner, Sandy, and then just, just November 1st, we brought on another licensed loan partner, Taylor, who's awesome as well. So we're definitely ramping up and gearing for me to go on maternity leave. But for these girls to, the big goal for 2022 is for my two licensed loan partners to get on the top producers list themselves. Love, love that. So when you, uh, so it sounds like you were a loan officer for seven years before you started be, building a team and being a team leader. Uh, and how, how I, the volume, I know you've gone past 100 million. You did 105 last year. How many loans are you guys closing? How many units? Families? Anywhere between 25 to 50, depending on the month. Per, per month. Okay, so doing lots of volume. Knowing what you know today, would you hire, would you start your team sooner? Or do you feel like you started it at the right time? I definitely should have started it sooner. I mean, I was watching these mortgage coach calls, I was hearing from everybody saying like, this is what you need to do. But, and I'll talk about this today. I was a huge control freak in my business and couldn't, had a really hard time putting my name on other people. And then I think I also had that scarcity mindset. Like, well, I have enough loans this month, but what if I don't have enough loans next month? What if I bring someone on and I can't, I can't support them. And it was just, it's a backwards way of thinking. You have to, you have to get rid of that scarcity mindset if you're going to take your career to the next level. And, and in your mind, what, what was, what was the defining moment when you went to the next level? Like there was a period of time where you were hitting a level of success you were okay with, 
but it sounds like there was a point where you really pivoted and you, you had that defining moment. What, what was that and when was that? I think that's a really excellent question. Um, I honestly think that the moment that everything kind of changed was when I started thinking about doing marketing and how to change my business because I was a top producer the year my son was born, my first son. I was number three in the country at our company. And then for a couple of years, I was kind of just one of those loan officers doing 10 loans or less a month, like nothing to really talk about. And I wanted to be a top producer again. My second son, Nick was born. He was about a year old. And I was like, I got to get to the top again. Like, I don't like being down here and just being mediocre. And I thought, well, how do I want to do it this time? Because the first time I did it, buying Zillow leads, cold calling realtors, and I'm sure a lot of people on this call can relate. Realtors aren't the nicest to lenders who cold call them without any value proposition. So it, it's hard. And I thought, well, I want to go direct to consumer this time. And I want to start talking to people and generating my own business to pass back to other people. I want to have more control over how much I make every month and not rely so much on referral partners. And so I thought, well, I need to have a message that relates to the consumer. Why am I doing what I'm doing? And when I figured out my mission and what makes me excited about being in this business and what value I can add for clients, then it all changed. The whole game changed. So what, what is that? You know, what is that value? What is that? Why? What is the, the value prop today? So I truly believe that homeownership changes the course of someone's life. I've seen it happen over and over and over again. So my mission is to empower people to use real estate to build wealth. Love that. Uh, when, when did you start becoming a mortgage coach? Two years in. So pretty early on to when I, after I got my license, I started looking online and I found these, the coaching calls and the software. And I just signed up. Like I was the only, I'm, I'm still the only person. My team are the only ones in our branch using mortgage coach, which is really fascinating. But I was just like, I got to do this, 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 the way that you can explain something to someone visually and comprehensively it's amazing for them it's a huge time saver for me so once I got started between the value I was getting from watching the coaching calls and the software I was sold for life Love so that. Shivani can, can I ask you real quick um you know because I do discovery meetings all the time with loan officers and we start with what's your value what's your mission and I hear a lot of advisors who will tell me, you know, kind of a similar, we want to help people build wealth through real estate. But if they're not mortgage coach users, do you think that that's, is that truth? If you're not showing someone a TCA and helping them make better financial decisions and even showing them how that wealth can be accumulated, what yeah, are your I thoughts on that? I think that there's a lot of people out there who, who say that that's what they're doing this for but then you don't really see it in the experience they're delivering their client because if the client's not educated, they're not going to be able to start building wealth using real estate. There is too much noise out there, too much conflicting advice. The media, I mean, from media, traditional media to social media, it's, it's a nightmare out there. It's a circus of information from people who some are credible to be giving it, some are not. That's if you're so a mortgage true. advisor, you're a credible resource. So how are you using that to educate your clients and make sure they really understand the concept of what you're delivering? And it starts with mortgage coach because it shows that I'm not just trying to deliver you a rate and a product. I'm trying to help you understand a strategy. And then from there, you've got to build on top of that. You've got to be an expert on your market. You need to know what's projected to happen with real estate values in the next five years. And then you, which we'll get into more, you need to be an expert on your loan process. How do you get that loan across the finish line? Killer. Love it. All right. So let's talk about loan process then for a second. Um, when it comes to a loan, since you've got uh, three other people on your team, does a loan come straight to you and then you assign it to a different team member? Or how, does the, how does the process flow work? The way we've designed the flow for our team is that I do the initial discovery call with the lead from a realtor or from directly a client or a financial advisor, wherever it came from. I do the initial discovery call so that I can best match them with either Sandy or Taylor on my team, because I really think that that's part of my job is to make sure they're with the loan partner that is best suited, best going to click with them and has the best expertise to take care of them because everybody has their specialties. So I do that initial discovery call. 
then one of my licensed loan partners takes over from there with collecting the application, putting together the TCA. We consult if they have any questions on, you know, should I be showing them this product or that one? Or can you help me with the income calculation? They've got four businesses and foreign income. So we go over all that stuff and then they deliver the rest of the client experience. Every single morning we have a pipeline review call where we go over where every loan is and where we where loans are stuck in the process, how processing is doing, how underwriting is doing, how we can shove things through faster. So I'm still actively involved in every single file after it's taken over by one of my partners, but they're actually handling it from till closing at that point. It sounds like you all do TCAs. What'd you say, Dave? They've done over 40 TCAs in the last 30 days. Yeah, over 40 TCAs in the last 30 days and over 1,500 total cost analysis. So clearly a red belt grand master that y'all are listening to right now. Uh, so really proud of you and your team and the value you're giving to your consumers. How do we get um, to black belt? Well, black belt is, both, but a lot of people don't realize it, but red belt is above black belt. Black belt is 300 TCAs and then red belt grand master is better than black belt. I have a black belt in Taekwondo, so I got confused there. Do you hear yeah. how competitive she is? She's like, how do I get Bad to ass. the top? I want to be yeah. up on the top. Right. <laughs> Love it. So so remember, guys, if you have questions, put those questions down below. So, so I mean, you've clearly made this pivot. I mean, you are a mortgage advisor and loan officers that you compete with that are providing fee worksheets are loan officers. Uh, what, are, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see loan officers making? Because now you're, you know, you're number one at the company you work at. You've, you've got a branch, you know a lot of loan officers. What are some of the biggest mistakes you see them make out there? So this is not a popular opinion in our industry because it's not the way that the major companies design it or even what I see close by in town. The I think a lot of people find a loan officer who's got to be the face of the business, who's great talking to people, who's great at sales, and then they keep them on the golf course and they've got admin behind them who actually know how to close loans. And I, I've seen, I mean, that formula works for a lot of companies, for a lot of loan officers, but I disagree because I think, and the way I bring my loan partners on, I train them completely different. The way I was brought on and started in this industry, I did everything myself. So from issuing disclosures, to typing up LOEs, to locking the rate yourself, to ordering your own closing disclosure, going over your own approval conditions. I see a lot of loan officers in this business who don't know how to read their underwriting conditions. And while I 100% agree that it's not the best use of a salesperson's time to be in that nitty gritty, I feel very strongly they need to know it inside and out. They need to know how to move that loan from start to finish themselves before they pass that job off to somebody else so they can focus on sales. Because you've got to be the expert, right? And if you fully understand how processing does their job, if you fully understand everything your loan officer assistant does, if you fully understand what the underwriter is looking for, you will sell the loan better to your client. You will put them in the better product for them. You will manage their expectations of the process better and you'll close more loans. A lot of times people will ask me like, you're the top producer and you're like, pulling SSRs and uploading them. And I'm like, well, I'm the person who's got a second right now. And I'm the person who promised this client when it's going to close. So that's all that matters. I will do whatever it takes to close the loan. Love, love your attitude, love your sass. And it also reminds me, Jeremy Forcier, who, you know, everybody on this channel knows Jeremy because I've interviewed him so many times. But when we did the site visit with Jeremy and it was a two-day site visit. We had loan officers that paid a lot of money. I think they all had paid like $5,000 to be there. And, and Jeremy gets us all in this room and he says, guys, what we're going to do next is the most important thing you're going to see over the two days that you're doing this site visit here. And of all the things you're going to get from me and you're going to learn from me, what you're going to observe over the next 30 minutes is going to be hopefully going to be the most valuable thing. And then he opened his door. Like we didn't really know, okay, he framed it. We opened his door and there was a meeting going on and it was um, his processors, his assistants. And like you, they were having their daily huddle to make sure things go. And, and Jeremy said, so first notice that it started without me there. He goes, it starts on time, no matter who. Like if I'm late, it still starts, no matter. So it starts on time. And, and he goes, well, I'll, we'll walk over there 
and I'll ask the questions and I'll push some things, you know, like it was just, it was like a symphony uh, of how he did it. And I, and I just heard you and it sounds like you're, you're real similar to that. I think that, you know, a lot of loan officers will get upset with their companies and we see a lot of people moving around right now and the grass is always greener and, but how much of the, of, of pushing your loan across the finish line, are you taking personal responsibility for? Because it's only on you. You're the one who cares the most. Your processor did not promise the client anything. Your underwriter is not obligated to the client. You made promises to that client about a certain level of service they were going to get from working with you over Quicken or some other online bank. You got to deliver on that. And the only way you can deliver on that is if you are personally ensuring that every loan gets to the finish line. So Shivani, how do you take that then post-closing? Like, do you, do you have a process that you're willing to share of, you know, not only just getting them across the finish line, but then, you know, building the wealth and, and keeping those lessons going? What, what's kind of your, your process post-closing? There are some really simple things we do post-closing and then some more um, dynamic and strategic things we do. Like one of the most simplest things I would say to every loan officer is save every client's first and last name in your phone. When they call you a year from now and need something, answer the phone. Hey, Andrew, how's it going? That means so much to the person that they weren't just a client. They weren't just one of hundreds of units you closed that year. They were important to you. And then all from things as basic as that to every year doing the TCA and sending them an analysis of whether they're still in the best loan product for them or if there's a better one. I mean, one of the ones I wanna show with everyone today is we showed someone why they shouldn't refinance. And we've been doing a lot of that in the last week. Putting together a TCA, knowing that we're not gonna make any money, we're not gonna get this lead, we're not gonna convert it. We're showing them why they should not refinance because they're getting these mailers and the, the mailers are getting real strategic. I'm sure everyone watching is seeing this too. It looks like it's from your company but it's from somebody else who's advertising some miracle interest rate that's got about 10 points attached to it. And the client reaches out to you and says, hey, like I have 2.25, but they're offering me 1.75. Should I do that? And we take the time to put together a total cost analysis, showing what that offer would cost them in the long run, how the net savings of the next five years are not good and how they should sit tight with what they have because they have an excellent loan product. And when we just got an email back from someone this morning who was like, wow, thank you so much for taking the time to show this to me. And you guys are like our mortgage advisors for life. Now, how do you package that on social? Are you willing to, to show one of your social posts? Because you do a great job storytelling and educating one to many, which I will tell you a lot of loan officers struggle with. So I would love for you to kind of package how you take that TCA example of how you just helped educate. And I love the fact that you said, here's why you shouldn't refinance. Like what a hook for helping people learn and understand those letters that they get. So will, will you show one of those or do you have one um, that you can think of, of, of how you then go one to many with that? Yeah, we just, me and Sandy, my loan partner just did one where we, we showed the TCA, but the problem is I think it might be on stories. And so it's gone. Oh, but we sat there and we had, we had Sandy and I saying, this is why you shouldn't refinance. I and saw so, it. That's yeah. That's why I was wondering. Keep Sandy going. pulled up the TCA. We just quickly on our phone showed them like, this is what would happen to your loan. This is how your five-year savings are not good. And then we ended with saying, and that's why you work with a mortgage advisor instead of a loan officer who's just trying to sell you something. Awesome. Love it. <laughs> yeah, that's so good. I, I love that you said that that they try to make the new, the solicitations look so good. Cause even my dad still calls me all the time. I thought I have the best rate. I'm like, dad, you have the best rate. Um, I think that's, that's a great reminder. You mentioned earlier about consumer direct strategies as one of the ways you wanted to escape mediocrity and, and become a top producer. Again, you mind sharing a little bit about what you're doing consumer direct? Yeah. So that was when we really zeroed in on social media. I work with my family. So my brother is our, my brother, Neil Dingra is our branch manager. And then my brother, June Dingra, works in San Francisco. I'm here in Reno, Nevada. So all three of us are kind of thinking like how, if we think that technology is going to soon replace us, if we think the AI is going to get good enough that you don't need a human being to process your mortgage, what do we do? What do we do to get ahead of that? And the thing was, you've got to have a personal brand. You've got to have something where people in your community know that you are the trusted resource for mortgages. 
how often do we like, are we at a dinner party and someone's like so excited telling everyone they bought a house and then they look at you and they go, oh, that's what you do. Sorry, I totally forgot. And it's so uncomfortable. And I can tell you that doesn't happen to me anymore because of this director consumer strategy we put together on social media. So I started just sharing my why, my mission, what I'm doing and why I'm doing it every day on social media. You can be the best in your business, but if nobody knows that you're the best, you're never going to go to the next level. So we started putting this out on Facebook and Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, all of it, just sharing our day-to-day wins, but not like, not your top producer award. That can't be the only thing you're sharing. You've got to be giving it the rest away for free, sharing your advice, sharing what you told someone today that helped them, what you how you changed a client's finances with a debt consolidation strategy, Um, why you believe in your local real estate market, what's the data projected, Um, why someone should stop renting and start buying, when do they know that's the right time for their family. So we started sharing all these messages and it took probably, I would say the first year, the benefit I got, I tripled my numbers the first year I started doing social media marketing. Which platforms, Shivani, would you say were Like if you had to focus on priority that gave you the biggest return, which ones would you say that first year helped you the most? Instagram, hands down. Mm -hmm. Because one of the things I did, I started, like I said, you guys with choosing my mission statement and getting really clear on my why. The next thing I did was design an avatar of my perfect client. So who is this person that I'm talking to with my marketing? And then I thought about it and that person lives on Instagram. So I went heavy on Instagram and it worked really well. So once, okay. So in that first year I tripled my numbers, but I didn't have a direct lead from Instagram. But what happened was a realtor would give my name along with maybe two other lenders because they were told that's what they need to do. And the person would search me, my Instagram would come up. They'd look and be like, oh man, I already feel like we're friends. Like I already know you. And the lead got warmer and they didn't bother calling the other two lenders on the list. They just reached out to me. So I started just having more of a presence and that really helped me. Then by year two, I started getting direct leads from Instagram and Facebook and converting those leads so that I could pass them back to my realtors. Was any of that through ads or was it just organic post? So I would post and then I would boost some posts, which I've heard a lot of mixed reviews on from Facebook ads. Like you should only be running campaigns. Boosts are a waste of money, but I've actually had success from both good targeted campaigns and boosting single posts. That's recently changed according to Bill. I don't know, Dave, if you were on that call with Bill or not over, it was just he and I, he's my go-to for any running ads, but he had said it used to be that way when you would boost, but now he's seen good results for those who do. So, yeah. Yeah, we covered that on on Friday. We were talking because, you know, the, the big Zilla news last week. And we were saying, how how can we turn that into an opportunity as mortgage coaches? And kind of the net out of Friday's conversation is first, you you really need to be a mortgage coach. So you're delivering value beyond the transaction advice. Uh, And then we we talked a lot about how um, real estate agents need to be doing more CMAs and how mortgage coaches need to be providing like a move up total cost analysis, you know, providing content an insight that helps the agents get that listings. And uh, yeah, so that was that was a big topic. I guess that brings the question, with that Zillow news, are you creating any content around that? And are you doing anything as a mortgage coach intentional as a result of what happened last week? I've seen a lot of realtors and everyone posting about the Zillow news and being really excited. And what I'm gonna do this week is I wanna post something that says, don't get, don't celebrate. Someone's going to learn from the mistakes Zillow made. Someone's going to figure out how to keep doing this iBuyer program and do it better. So focus on building your personal brand. Don't take your foot off the gas because they failed. People are going to learn from their mistakes. Another company is going to come back and do it better. So be ready. Keep building yourself as the expert. Keep building yourself as the local authority on real estate. Get more aggressive in the wake of this news. Yeah. Well, are you doing anything to help your realtors have more CMAs or is there any particular mortgage coach strategies that you're leveraging in today's market? 
Okay, my realtors love the total cost analysis. Like they get so excited because they get the alerts, right? When someone's looking at it. So they know that if someone who's fallen off the radar and hasn't really been responding to their texts or calls for the last three weeks, looks at their mortgage coach that all of a sudden they're thinking about buying again. So they love that. Then they love when we do the, um, the, the appraisal gap strategy, which I actually learned from Denise on one of these calls. They love all the resources and that the client knows the payment, right? Because how many times are they on the weekend on Saturday and they're making the offer and their client's like, well, what's the payment going to be? And they're like, well, just call Shivani. She'll plug it into the report real quick, which literally takes me seconds. And then they don't have to answer those questions anymore. The client's ready. They've got their cash to close prepared. I've eliminated a lot of the uncertainty in the process for them. The last thing that I think that delivers real value to realtors in using the TCAs specifically for pre-approved buyers is that I tell every buyer I want you to look at this report for the house before you see the house in person. It is important to me that you like this mortgage payment as much as you like the house. And psychologically, you are much better positioned as you're touring that house if you already know what kind of cash you need on hand to close on that house and what the monthly payments are going to look like. Plus, it's a competitive market. When you see that house, if you like it, we need to be ready to move quick. And if you already know the numbers, you're going to be ready to move quick. So, um, Todd and Deborah, I am loving where this conversation is going. I'd say in about 10 minutes, I want to get into some specific how she's using Mortgage Coach and walk through a couple Mortgage Coach strategies, but I'll let the two of you ask questions for the next 10 minutes, and then I'll jump back in. All right, I'm just reading a couple of quick questions that are here in the Zoom chat, and if anyone's, if there's anything, maybe Robert and Facebook, maybe throw it over to Zoom so I can check it, since I'm not good at multitasking between the two. Um, someone's asking, are you using a business account or using personal account or both on your social media? I feel really strongly about this. You should not have separate accounts. You need one. You're not a separate person. You're not two different people. And when you're doing social media marketing, it's not advertising. It's not cookie cutter. It doesn't need to be super polished. You need to be talking to people as though you're, they're your friend. And that's the goal with social media is you're going to attract people who you would want to work with, who you would click with, who you'd get along well with. It's the beauty of the whole thing. So they should be seeing who you really are as a person, not just your business and separately as your personal that's private. It should all be in one place, in my opinion. Now for Facebook, do you, I mean, there's no analytics. You can't run ads. I mean, do you, do you Facebook, also do I have that? a business page? Yeah. And I post everything there, but right. it's linked to my personal Instagram. Mm -hmm. So my stories going to my Facebook business page are all personal stories. Yeah. You're right though. On Facebook, you got to have that business page that mm -hmm. people can like and leave reviews on and all of that. For sure. Thanks for clarifying, Deborah. And the one thing I want to point out with Shivani is, and kind of like what you said with your client story, you guys have got to be doing stories and reels and going live. The algorithms don't apply when you do that. So you're always going to get the most reach and exposure. Even if you're just making a regular post, share it to your story, add a poll, add a question, add an emoji. You want to create conversation and engagement where it's easy for people to hit yes or no to get more information. So I and love that you like do that. that. Yeah. They like feeling like they're, you know, a part of the process. When I do Q and A's and then I respond to their Q and A's on stories the next day, people always are really excited about that. Mm-hmm. So, so how often? Have, are, oh, since I'm not following you, how often are you? How often are you posting so people know? Is this like a couple times a day, once a day, three times a week? So in my, I try to post fairly often in the actual grid, like posts that go up and live there forever, and then stories. I try not to put like a limit. Like I just want to authentically share when I have things worth sharing. I don't want to say I got to post ten stories a day and then post things of no value. So when I have something worth sharing, I share it on stories. That does end up being a lot though. I post a lot. All right, good. Well, I'm following you now. So I, I did multitask when Dave was talking and can't wait to see. And if y'all notice, you can add, like when you have stories, you can add it to your highlights on Instagram where your Instagram could literally be your website. I mean, you could have client testimonials that if you share something to a story, you just click the three little dots and you can add it to a highlight, but maybe you have testimonials, client stories, building wealth, examples with real estate. I mean, you, that way they do live forever. Um, yeah. you know, if it's not on your main newsfeed, so just try to think of your Instagram as a website. 
for sure. I need to, I, oh, I have some of those highlight reels set up and I always forget to just put it. I know. You can always but go you back. Can it, you can go back. Yeah. 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 Do you do anything that's directly targeting? Like, I know you're very consumer based, but anything that brings in agent partners or financial advisors? I do a lot. So a lot of the videos I put out, I'll be specific in my hashtags or when I boost them to target realtors, because the, the stuff I'm sharing, those realtors could reshare to their own spheres and add value. Like last week, I did one on the biggest mistake I'm seeing young home buyers make, which is trying to buy their dream home as their first home. And a lot of realtors in my market reshared it because that's exactly the message they're trying to spread to their clients. Like, let's be realistic. Let's look at this as an investment towards your future. It's awesome. What about any Facebook groups? There's two local real estate groups in my area that I make sure I made sure to join. And then when I have something that I feel like you don't want to spam these groups and you don't want to like over post to everybody, but I always try to, when it's appropriate, share into that group, something that could help them. Like tonight we're doing a VA home buyer seminar, um, at a, one of the local realties. And so we've reshared that a lot. We've pushed it out on traditional media a ton. So local news stations, just in honor of veterans day and also, like, it's been a long time since people were doing these homebuyer seminars in person. So we just want to get back to that. Love how did that you grow oh, go ahead, Todd. I don't know. You got it, Deborah. How, do, how are you driving traffic to those and even your real estate events? Because I'll tell you, I, I hear a lot of clients asking for help on getting, you know, butts in the seats. And now with the whole convenience factor of if it is Zoom, they don't have the drive time to attend and it can be more at their leisure, but then it's harder to get them to actually show up because something, especially with agents, something could come up like, oh, this call went longer. I've got to take this listing appointment. So do you do anything, especially with social media that helps get gain the commitment? Like, do you post events? Do you do Facebook events and drive attendance or kind of what's your, your process there? Yeah. So we definitely do a ton of marketing that is geared towards getting butts and seats like Facebook at events, LinkedIn events. But to be honest with you, I don't care if there's any butts in the seat. I don't care if nobody comes tonight. What matters to me is the marketing that went into tonight, that it was on the news, that it was yeah. on social media, that people saw that we were trying to provide value. And then lastly, to make sure that I really don't care if no butts are in the seat, I always have a video guy there to market the event so that I have content from it later. And I also go live on my Instagram for the people who didn't come so they can see it. And then it helps me with the algorithm. So putting on the event, who actually shows up is never really my concern. So what I love about that, because I know you're a huge fan of Denise's, I, I remember when we were first doing events for her, like in 2013, 14, that's her, that was her exact approach. She was like, I don't care if no one shows up. Perception's reality. And so we're going to take photos. We're going to angle the photos that even if there's only two heads, it looks like it's a full room because she wasn't, she was the mortgage nerd then, but she wasn't who she was today, although she had that vision. And I think the more that you can see yourself in that role of where you want to be, which is part of the strategy, you have to have your vision crystal clear, your values crystal clear. Then you can start building the strategy. But I love what you just said, because so many people get caught up in results of metrics of like how many people actually showed when we don't take into account of what you can control. And when you consistently take action, which is why I love my win by noon planner, just a little plug for win by noon is because it shows you if you do the right things, eventually the results come, but how often do we, and it's kind of like working out, I'll go work out and I'll jump on that scale. And two weeks later, I'm like, how have I gained weight? Like, how is this possible? But if you stick with it long enough, then you start seeing the results. So I love that you just shared that and just wanted you to know, uh, Denise had that same philosophy way back in, you know, 2013, when we first started doing her social media. That makes my day. <laughs> and I think too, like, you're right that we don't know what the reward we're going to get is like, I'm so not focused on how many people showed up that when I did this, I did a, a event targeting women and empowering them to begin learning how to use real estate investing. And I put, I put out 25 seats. And at the end of the event, my brother was like, I stopped counting at 50 when people were like standing room in the back and didn't have anywhere to go because my focus was so little on how many people actually came and just delivering the value and promoting the event. And then that was actually that event was how I recruited Taylor 
my newest loan officer on the team. Wow. She came and she's like, man, I'm so on board with this mission. So you don't know what the rewards you're going to get are going to be, but just keep creating momentum. Keep planning things. Keep marketing yourself. Keep putting yourself out there. No one comes. Who cares? Well, it's funny you say that about empowering women because your brother uh, DM'd me and I, he was excited when he saw my story. Okay. This is how social media works, guys. He saw my story that Dave posted and tagged me that we were interviewing his sister today. And so I asked him, what should I ask her? I won't put the first question that he asked, (laughs) but he said, um, how, I would ask her about how she focuses on delivering value, not just trying to do every single transaction out there and how that has ultimately led her to doing more business in recent years than than the average loan officer. So I guess you do have that avatar and do you say no to the ones that don't fit that mold or kind of elaborate off that? So I, if you follow my social media, you know that I'm really hyped up on women and empowering women to use real estate And to get financially savvy because that really changed my life. And I believe it can change theirs too. And I believe that when women are better financially educated and empowered in a community, their family does better, their community does better, the system as a whole benefits. But that doesn't mean I don't work with men. That doesn't mean I don't like men. That doesn't mean I don't have a lot of male clients or married couple clients. Um, I'm currently in school to get my marriage and family therapist degree because people fight about money a lot. And so I want to be able to help them psychologically change the associations they have with money that are holding them back. I want to help them plan to pass down generational wealth better. So a lot of these things involve people beyond women, right? But I'm really passionate about that thing. And it it attracts a lot of people there. And then I think it attracts a lot of men who are on board with that mission too. And a lot of moms and dads and families who are on board with that too. So It's not that I say I'm not going to work with anybody else. It's just that everybody knows I'm really excited about working with a certain demographic. Well, Dave, I don't know if you got Kristen to commit to doing another next gen home buyers report, but her report that she did last year in October said that the second largest demographic buying are single females. So Uh, no, we should talk to Kristen Messerly, see what the status is on that. And uh, it'd be fun to have some empowered women and Deb, have you lead the mastermind for a mortgage coach and, and talk about women building wealth with real estate Yeah. and mortgage coach. <laughs> so, so let's, let's, I see some pretty cool comments. So Ed Diaz just said, this is one of the best MC webinars. She is a hundred percent spot on, on all her points. Excellent. Uh, Keith Collins said uh, lots of truth bombs here. He really called out home ownership creates um, or changes the course of someone's life. Uh, Brian Covey just said engagement matters. So guys, keep the questions coming. Keep the awesomeness coming. So let's talk about, a lot. You, you've got this vision. You've got this mission. You have this avatar client, but, but you're actually giving advice and strategies. So let's, let's do talk about, you know, why did you become a mortgage coach when you did? And then let's talk about how you're how you're turning that, what you're doing on a day-to-day basis as a mortgage coach. So what was your original why? I didn't want to sell people mortgages. Like I didn't, as a kid, I didn't tell people when I grow up, I want to sell mortgages. So when I discovered mortgage coach, I was like, wow, this is a way to educate people, to give the, to change the way they think. And if I'm being honest with everybody, what I love most is influencing people. I don't mean like social media influencer. I mean, I love seeing someone's like eyes light up or the light bulb go on because you made them think about something differently. And Mortgage Coach helps me do that every single time. So, so guys, I want you to think about what she just said. And for anyone that is not, that's just delivering a few worksheet, you can't possibly understand what she's talking about. But, but that, that is the Mortgage Coach, the name of Mortgage Coach, the company name is Wow Tools. And, and I was addicted to that same thing. I mean, that, that like when someone talked to me, I wanted to be able to ask them questions and I want to be like, wow, I never thought of my mortgage like this before. I never, I never thought of that. And I never thought of that. And oh my gosh. So, so I think that's super powerful. So for anyone that's listening to this, that is a mortgage coach, I want them to hear your scripting. And then I have a question for anyone who's listening. It's not already a mortgage coach. 
So when you give the total cost analysis, when do you give it in the sales process and how do you describe it? What is your script? So let's do it for a refi first. Okay. A refi, someone calls me saying, hey, I'm looking for rates on a refi. Could you just give me a call back when you get a chance? I call them back and I say, can you shoot me over a copy of your mortgage statement and an idea of what your credit is like? That's not scary, right? That's not asking too much of anybody. They send me their mortgage statement and an idea of what their credit's like. Me or one of, someone on my team puts together a total cost analysis comparing their current mortgage. We can look up the property value online. We can find the taxes. We made it really easy for them to get a quote from us. Then we put together the total cost analysis. Oh, we also ask them, what is the goal of the refi? Are you looking to drop the monthly payment as low as possible, shorten the loan term, pull cash out? What's your main goal? Aside from what they tell us the main goal is, we always show them just a regular rate and term. We always show them expediting the payoff because sometimes people don't know what their goal should be. That's our job to help them figure that out. So we make sure we include what they asked for and then a couple other strategies in the TCA. We shoot that over to them. And then right underneath that, it says, happy to hop on a phone call to discuss this. In the meantime, if you're ready, go ahead and start the application online. I'm gonna tell you guys, 95% of people start the application online and skip the phone call because we answered all their questions in the video. So if you don't include the video, you're actually wasting your own time. So you now, do a video on a lot of your mortgage credit TCAs. Yes. So we always, the first one they get always has a video. It's not a TCA if it doesn't have the video. You got to include the video. And then whether, once you're updating that, like, okay, so let's shift to say this is a pre-approval. So if someone calls asking for a pre-approval, we go over that discovery call with them, find out the little bits we need to know about how they earn income so that we can guide them through filling out the application. What's their timeline like? What are they scared of? What are they excited about? Then we get them started on our online application. When that comes back through, we do the income qual, check the loan programs they qualify for, and then respond with the TCA. We send them a TCA and we say, we need to set up a phone call or meeting now or Zoom to go over this and discuss next steps. And that's how the flow works. Once that pre-approval lead has that first video explaining everything, followed up by a phone call explaining everything a second time, because I think it's important they get this twice in a purchase because it's a lot of information, especially if they're a first time home buyer. Then we make the video stop playing when we plug different addresses in for them. We don't have it keep playing over and over. The only time I would do another video is like something got complicated. Like we need to go over an appraisal gap strategy and I need to explain that to them or they're um, deciding between doing a 30 year fixed and an arm because they may not keep this loan that long. Then I'll record on my phone on the weekend, a quick video explaining this new strategy I plugged in and send that over. And that saves me time, right? Because I've got two kids and it's the weekend and we're running between games. I record that video on my time. And then they're not calling me when I've got screaming kids in the back seat to go over the report because I told them what they needed to know in the video and they can watch it on their time. And it was recorded on my time. So that's such a good takeaway. And when I interviewed Amber Kovart and she talked about refi, she's like, hey, I'm doing purchases as my day job. And then after my kids are in bed, I'm putting videos on refi TCAs. Now guys, that was when there was a refi tidal wave coming through. She was putting more time, but I just can't emphasize enough for anyone who's not a mortgage coach yet, not only is it a competitive advantage, not only is it a better value to your consumer, but it saves you massive time. I've When I asked Jeremy Forcia, how much time does it save? He says, for every five minutes in mortgage coach, it saves me 30 minutes of just wasted conversation. How would you answer that? How much Agreed. time does mortgage coach save? It saves, I would agree. I think it really does. The, an average TCA takes my team for a refi less than 10 minutes to put together. And the, it takes literally... So Taylor just started with us and she wasn't using mortgage coach before. And she's like, okay, literally this all would have taken over an hour before. And so, it's so much easier. Like people think whenever I hear from a loan officer and they're like, I don't know though, it's like too much information. And I don't have the time to do that for every refund. I'm like, how do you not like, you don't have the time to not be doing this. My thing is, is the cost of a lost opportunity by not doing a TCA I, I don't care how much time it takes you, whether you're learning, whether you can do it in three minutes, the missed opportunity is the referrals and the, you know, 
the influence, like what you talked about, Shivani, where when you can teach somebody something and you've now changed the shape of their brain, they don't forget that. That now makes you where you're not going to be forgettable. So it's not just the time that it would take you to go acquire more agent relationships or clients if you replaced it by just being committed to being an advisor and using TCAs you are actually saving time and maximizing your revenue for the time that you are spending while positioning yourself in the consumer's mind and your referral partners as the expert, especially when you go one to many, not just one to one. So it's not a, and I get clients that tell me, so I'm like, it's, it's not about time. It's about value and how you're going to get referral business by the value that you provide. And at some point there is a rocket mortgage or someone who will do it faster, quicker, if, if your only option is giving them itemized fee worksheets, that is not advice. So, so Shivani, could you pull up a total cost analysis real quick? I want to want to do a little audit of what you're doing and how you're doing it. And uh, I know every time I, I put a red belt grandmaster like you on spot like this, some takeaways come for everyone. Uh, so by the way, takeaway number one, two, like look at that beautiful family. Uh, two boys and a, another one coming in a few months. A girl coming. That's a all girl. Clear. Congrats. That's awesome. Click on settings in the upper right hand corner real quick for everyone. I want you guys to notice that she's created 1,624 TCAs. She's put a video on 871 of those and they've been viewed almost 11,000 times, guys. So think of the leverage of that. Uh, you know, on average, someone's clicking on that link six-ish times. So that's pretty cool, great job. Um, let's pull up an actual total cost analysis. Let's look at one of your TCAs that you think would be a good, call it story or case for everybody. I wanna show because of what Deborah was just talking about. Um, so I sent this to a client who's doing delayed purchase financing. So they closed on Friday using cash and now they wanna pull a bit of a mortgage back out. So we sent this over to them. And the coolest thing was she was so stoked when she got it and she called me and she said, thank you so much. And then she goes, I showed it to like five people in my office. And I was like, yes, that's awesome. I'm so happy you did that. But it's pretty much exactly what Deborah was just saying. So what, wait, I want to call out a few things. So notice in the upper left-hand corner, is that your team, a picture of your team? Yep. So, so you Guys, you can put whatever you want on this. It could be you, it could be your team. Josh Metal puts his family, whatever, but that's intentional. It's branding. You notice that the company she works for, it's branded. Um, as you scroll down, you'll notice she put a video on it. So she's personally connecting. It's two minutes and 31 seconds. Uh, so so you're, you're, you're killing it. You're just doing all the best practices of a modern mortgage advisor. Uh, and for everybody who's nervous about video, you'll notice you stop caring what you look like too. Like you just want to get it out there. After you do enough of these. Oh, go ahead. What were you going to say? Shivani? Just after you do enough of these, the video thing gets very, it's not scary. So for anyone out there who's like, I don't know about doing a video, you will get over it so fast. Do five and you're done. And she's done 800 and you become a master. Uh, and guys, you will W-A-Z-D your business. What Amazon and Zillow can't do, will never do. They're not local. They're not going to drill down on what are your goals? What are your hopes? What are your dreams? They're not going to put a mortgage plan, you know, strategies together and, and put a personal video on it. Uh, you will be unique for forever if you do this. Uh, Todd, any questions you have around this TCA or Deborah, anything you have before we move off this? No, I would just, you know, reemphasize a couple of things, right? Number one is, you know, you've kind of already highlighted, Dave, all the things that she's doing right. But I think the, the real key there is for those of you who aren't putting video on there, you know, I, I love um, Shivani's quote. I wrote it down. It's not a TCA if it doesn't include a video. I think that that's really the key, right, is to get over yourself. She said it's going to take five times till we do it. You know, we talk about this a lot, but I still feel like there's a lot of you who are watching this who are using the TCA, but aren't getting that full value out of it. Um, I was on a call with my team this morning and, you know, I'll be transparent. It took forever for me to get my business partner who's running the sales side of the team to be consistent with TCAs. And just this last year, you know, he said that's kind of been his killer. We talk about all the time when we did the TCA 
a day, the accountability piece we did in, in third quarter, you know, we proved on during that call with Jeremy and, and coaching through other people that people who do a TCA for all of their clients had uh, higher conversion rates, had better profitability, um, and essentially close more loans with less stress. And so I just think it's just a, a perfect example, Shivani, of what you're doing and really appreciate how you've set everything up. And the TCA, honestly, to me, is like the pivotal moment of making sure they understand what they're doing, because a lot of us are having clients that are signing loan disclosures online. And let's be honest, how many, like, are they reading those very closely? Or are they just clicking through and moving? So if they hadn't already seen a total cost analysis before that, you're likely at the closing table to have questions about, well, what are these points? Or what is this fee? Or what's going on? You eliminate that with the total cost analysis, because it was very clearly laid out from the beginning. What about with realtors? Is there any way, any advice you have for mortgage coaches listening to this, um, how they integrate mortgage coach into their real estate value proposition? And, and you said all your realtors love it. Like, what have you done so that your realtors even know about it and love it? So I no longer ask a realtor to go to coffee or lunch without having a specific reason that I'm taking them, right? Like, I, they don't have time for that. They've got too many people calling them, asking them to take them especially now because lenders business has slowed down. So they're all smoking all the realtors. A realtor last week just showed me their phone and it was like nonstop calls from lenders. So show up with the total cost analysis, show them what their pre-approved client gets. Oh, look, she, for my client, she's going to put together comparing a 30 year fix with 3% down FHA, 5% down conventional, the Nevada home is possible grant program for first time home buyers wow, this is all really clearly laid out for them so that they understand. Because how many of you guys have heard that uncertainty repels people? So when they feel confused by the home buying process and the pre-approval process, they're not gonna buy a home. How clear can you make it for them? And then you tell the realtor, I do this because it helps you close more loans. I mean, more houses, close more escrows. Because you don't have to worry. When you send me a pre-approval client, you can ensure I will make sure they understand what to expect, they understand their financing, they understand what they qualify for, and they're ready to make serious decisions. So, so I don't know if you guys saw this or not. Uh, a video that's getting a tremendous amount of playtime in the mortgage coach community is last year's Modern Mortgage Summit micro presentation from Denise Donahue we're calling it how Denise Donahue blows the mind of realtor groups. By the way, I posted that on the first, I haven't even posted it anywhere or promoted it. It's been watched 1700 times, but, but in this, Denise gives a whole playbook and guys, it's only five minutes. We're going to put a link down below, but she's going to talk about how she does realtor lunch and learns and how she's using, it's not about mortgage coaching the technology. It's about the stories and the strategies. So, so like she's going to tell a story that's relevant to a realtor, like, hey, how I'm making first time home buyers, uh, you know, more motivated to make winning offers. Like getting someone to say they want to buy a house is one thing, getting someone motivated to they're going to write an offer, actually win in a competitive marketplace. That's another thing. Let me show you realtors how I do that. Or, or let me show you how I help um, move up buyers finally decide to list their home and be motivated to move up. Let me show you how I make it clear for folks. So she she tells a story and then she says, and this is how I do it. Anything you want to add to that, Shivani? Is that the one you sent me on Instagram? Uh, it might be. I think it might be. Everybody should yeah. go watch that because it's yeah, like- Yeah, it is, it is the one. It, I watched it and I was like, this is so brilliant. Like what she's doing here and putting together value for her realtors and how she's showing them the inside of her business. Because again- you can be doing amazing things inside your business. Are you telling people about it enough? So she shows them how she's leveraging these total cost analysis, these buy versus rents, these appraisal gap strategies to help their clients understand and convert, to help their clients close on homes, to help their clients want to list the home with them and then buy another one. I mean, I can't think of a better value to give a realtor and you won't have to worry about butts and seats when you tell them that's what you're going to do. They'll all show up. So, so guys, Todd, I want to give you the closing word in a minute. I've got one more question for you, Shivani. I do, I do, I did put the link to the Denise Donahue five minutes. It's in Facebook. 
if you're watching this in YouTube, it'll be down below in show notes. Uh, but, but I want to make sure that our community is getting after it. Uh, you know, they're, they're reaching out, they're doing move up analysis. If there was one mortgage coach strategy that you would recommend to the community that they, they make sure they know how to do and they leverage that would help them with realtors, what would that one strategy be? Okay, I have to answer another part of the question too for refis. So for realtors, I would say that I think the appraisal gap one is a big one. I also think the price difference one is huge. So when a client sends me a house they're looking at and I see that it's listed at 490 and they ask me to plug 475 into the report, I show them 475 and I show them 490 because I want them to see that that difference in price is not worth losing the house over. The difference it's going to make in your monthly payment and your cash to close. Don't let your ego get in the way right now. The win is not against the seller. The win is against the other buyers on the market. So let's be like, let's be real clear about if you're going to have a fit over five thousand or ten thousand dollars on the price. What it's really, how is it really going to affect you? And then when they see that's like ten dollars a month, I'm like, you're not even going to stop going to Starbucks over that. Like, let's be honest. So I always show them that. And I find that helps the realtor a lot because then the realtor's not sitting there with them Saturday night at eight o'clock being like, I just think we need to offer full price in this market. Cause they're like already like, okay, that's fine. And now you for refis, you have to do the reinvest saving strategy. You have to, you have to show them what would happen if they did the refi and pretended they didn't and just keep making the same payment. Can you give um, a sample refi TCA and a sample, uh, Put whatever you call what do you call that TCA the purchase what what what, what do you call the that price difference one price yeah the price send me, if you have to do it right now but after the call just email it to me I'll put links down below so here's my last question um, there's a lot of new loan officers coming into the business in fact um, one of them asked me to ask you any advice you have for new loan officers just try to give a one to two minute if there was you know hundred new loan officers watching this. What's one piece of advice from Shivani? Do you know why someone should work with you? Do you know why you over any other loan officer? Do you know, do you know very succinctly and quickly and confidently why you? Maybe that's because you're a mortgage coach. Maybe that's because you have some other expertise. Maybe it's the experience you draw from the career you had before. But you would be amazed how many people, when the realtor says, why should I work with you? They start rambling and they get nervous and they don't know what to say. Why you? No, why? Why are their clients better off in your hands? Boom. Todd, any closing questions or closing taking action coaching notes from Todd? Well, I just want to say, Shivani, I, I love meeting you today and, and congrats on having such a, a great business. And I think, you know, ultimately we learned a ton from Shivani, but I, I think there's also some reminders in there of what she's doing great that you're all loving her for. Number one is she said, hey, I want to I want to be a top producer again, right? She set a goal to be number one. Um, and so she knew how many loans that was going to be and what she had to do to get there. Um, and then when we uh, talked about it a couple of times here, but it was really where, how we started the Modern Mortgage Summit was around this, you have to have this more, your personal mortgage manifesto. And Dave's done a bunch of interviews recently of top producers about their mortgage manifesto. Just go up to the Facebook group and type that into the search bar. Um, and she's super passionate about it, right? You I mean, you saw her light up when she talked about um, doing the events for the VA, but really she lit up even more when she talked about helping and empowering women and helping and empowering people to grow wealth. And that mortgage manifesto answers the thing that she just said. If you're a, a new loan officer, you have to know your why. I promise you that no one gets off the phone with Shivani or talks to a team member and doesn't uh, you know, understand the why. And lastly, she takes action, right? She's using social media to tell the story and that's how she's growing her business. And when you document your life, right? That's what Gary Vee always says. It's not that difficult. So when you're clear on the vision, when you're when you're clear on the mission, and then you document what you do, then you're going to have the success that she's having because people are going to be attracted to you, right? She knows her avatar. She's talking to who that is. Um, and so I just love it. I just uh, love everything about it, Shivani, and uh, can't wait to a, see you crush your goal and be number one again this year. And then more importantly, enjoy the three months off with your new baby girl after the first of the year. Thank you so much. So Shivani, last question as we wrap it up, um, your words of wisdom to all mortgage coaches or future mortgage coaches. A lot of folks watching this uh, are in the community, but they're not using the total cost analysis. A lot of people are using the total cost analysis, but what are your closing words of advice for wannabe mortgage coaches, future mortgage coaches and mortgage coaches today? 
So when you're sitting down and you're getting ready to do that TCA, because you're going to start doing it for every single client today, right? If you're not already doing that, that's the first thing on your to-do list. Take a second and think. Think about the client's overall financial picture. Think about what the client said to you on the phone on, about their goals. Think about how could I create an aha moment with this? Just take one minute and do that before you start putting the products in, before you start thinking about what to show them. And then right before you send it, right before you're ready to record that video, look, like look at the analysis. Mortgage Coach is doing so much of the work for you on what the five-year savings are or what the best financing strategy is for that pre-approval lead. Think about which one you want them to do. You don't have to tell them to do that one, but know in your mind that you know the best strategy for them. Put so, that out into the universe and then send the TCA. So that is such powerful advice. And I want everybody to think of it this way. Every loan officer in America in, in your competition, they're going to focus on monthly payment, cash to close, and interest rate. And, that, and that's what they're going to talk about. What you heard Shivani just say is, you know what? Like she didn't talk about the transactional details. She talked about what the client's goals are, what their dreams are. And then she talked about numbers beyond the transaction, like the cost of different loans over five years, or the fact that one loan might help them achieve a financial goal. So she's looking for that value beyond the transaction. Cause, cause guys, that's where the magic happens. That's where you create the wow for the family. That's where you really become more than a loan officer. You become the most valuable financial advisor that family's ever had. And, uh, and that's where all the magic happens. So Shivani, you've been amazing. I can't wait for our next interview. And uh, if anybody's watching this, you've got value or you like this, make sure you like it on social media so we get more views and uh, help the algorithms. If you got value from this, share it with another mortgage friend, someone that you think would be inspired by this, would get ideas from this. Shivani, can't wait to see you in person and good luck. Uh, can't wait to see photos of your 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 expanded baby or expanded family and your new baby in a few Please months. Please don't let the baby be expanded. Yeah, right. Expanded family. All right. Thank Take you. Care. Thanks, everyone. Have a good one. Take care. Bye, guys. Have a good one.